Hey everybody, it's Living Dread Girl with Locks, Knots, and Stitches, a Fiber Arts podcast, and this is episode number 12. I live here in beautiful Rochester, New York, with my son slash producer, three dogs, three cats, three reptiles. Whoop, whoop! I am most active on Instagram as locks underscore knots underscore stitches. The best way to contact me is locksknotstitches at gmail.com. And of course, I'm on Ravelry as Sparkling Water 000, and I promise you, I'm getting far better at Ravelry. There is absolutely no group for the podcast, but I'm starting to post my projects and putting in the notes. And I'm trying to take better notes because sometimes I don't, and I just do what I need to and move on because you know I have the experience and the knowledge to do such a thing. So, but now I'm putting in notes of what I experience and why. Alright, let me just clean off my glasses because I forgot to do that <laughs> before I started. Um, sorry for the um. Don't forget to support your local yarn shops. Um, it's linked down below. And don't forget to support your local roller derby. Again, more links down below. Those links will get you in touch, especially the roller derby with the WFTDA and the MRDA and I think it's Junior Derby Junior Derby Junior Roller Derby Association so GRDA as well sorry no. should have looked that up ahead of time but cool cool oh much better so there's this thing called administration. It's so, so, so formal. This is that part right now. Um, yet yeah, now, I looked up administration, the exact meaning. It's really long. I also looked up synonyms. <laughs> the ones I liked were top banana, czar, and regime. We're going to call this new part top banana. So moving ahead. Let me start with the top banana stuff as I pour some coffee. I'll explain this in a minute. Alright. So, uh, first thing, I don't have much in the top banana section, um, but uh, it is going into the holidays. I'm not sure when I'll be able to podcast next. As you can see right now, I'm going every three weeks instead of every two weeks. It's a little long for me, but it's going to have to be that way for some time right now because of the holidays. I work in a retail environment. So I work with animals in a retail environment. Um, so it is what it is. So fortunately right now is a little iffy, but I, come January it will be two weeks. So I'm not sure how much crochet or knitting I'll get done moving forward, crafting at all, but we'll see. Um, some more top banana stuff I just want to mention. I am enjoying DPNs, excuse me, a lot more now because of they are easier to use. Where are you going, sweet girl? Um, they're cheap. They're easier to obtain than, uh, you know, 47-inch. Is it 47? 120 centimeter um, circular needle. So just kind of stuck with that. I also, it's a little hard to get 16 inch, like five, you know, for hats, uh, 16 inch circulars, which is what? How many centimeters to everybody? Is it 40? 40 centimeters? Um, so DPNs just, they're accessible, they're cheap. And I can use the seven inch DPNs on a lot of different projects. No problem. They are still a little bit fiddly for me, and I do drop stitches, but I also can easily pick up those stitches, so it's not a big deal. And one last thing in the top banana section is it was my birthday, so now I'm total. I'm a total of 36 years. <laughs> I am now 36 years old. Apparently, I'm a total of that. I am a sum of all the years I've been on this earth. <laughs> all right. Moving on, uh, charity works. 
or charity. I, I don't know where I got works from. It doesn't say works on here, I swear to you. Moving on. Are you trying to get in my yarn, little girl? Anyways. Um, what am I drinking? Let's start with that first instead of charity works because, you know, that's what I said. I'm just drinking black coffee, my favorite mug from the dollar store. I really love this mug. I feel that it's classy and timeless and I only need one mug on one person. There's two humans living in this house. We don't need much. Um, so I don't buy very many. But, I love this mug. Um, yeah, just plain black coffee. It's in this thermos. There is a top for this thermos. You know, the little cup that you drink out of. It's over there. Um, so I make my coffee in a French press. So in order to keep it warm, I put it in here and then just pour more as I drink it. And I just put a splash of water in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's about it. It doesn't add any weird taste to it. Um, it's great. So, yay! All right, charity things and goodness. Um, I will put the information down below. I will uh, put some information up here, maybe a picture on this side if I can. And what's going on is there's like this uh, red hats for preemies and newborns. So it's a really cool charity. Again, if you look down the information down below, <laughs> big hearts. And it's for the American Heart Association. <laughs> okay, volunteers from around the country are joining the American Heart Association in conjunction with the Children's Heart Foundation to celebrate American Heart Month by knitting and crocheting red hats for babies born in February at participating hospitals. Little Hats, Big Hearts honors babies, moms, and heart-healthy lives in a very special way. Supporters are knitting and crocheting red hats to be given out to thousands of babies during American Heart Month in order to empower moms to live heart-healthy lives and help their children do the same. So there you go. Next time I will come prepared. Where are you going? All right. So... Uh, I will do some editing, I promise. <laughs> <clears throat> so I will be doing that. So hopefully by next podcast, I will have some red hats for you. All right. So on to FOs. Like I said, I've been liking the DPNs. I should have gotten the yarn out for this project, and I didn't. But whatever. You've seen it last podcast. Um, this is the Chains of Gold hat. Uh, it's one of Joanne, uh, Joanne's, <laughs> Joanne Fabrics patterns. Yeah. yeah. One of those ones you just take off. This is a hot mess now. It's all ripped up. Got all my notes in there and stuff. Not really a whole lot of notes. The pattern was well written, pretty straightforward. You might get it. No. Only thing I did differently is I did it on five, on the DPNs, actually, three DPNs, or 40, I don't know. I did it on DPNs instead of Magic Loop, so I know you end up using DPNs for the top anyways when you knit this down, so I was like, I just do DPNs, period. Plus, I didn't have any needles. So, oh, <laughs> where is she going? Oh, she's crawling in my hair. Okay, so there you go. Pretty nice, right? Gorgeous cabled hat. There is one mistake. I knew it right after I did it, and I just was like, I'm not going back. There it is. I was like, I was like, I made this mistake, and I. Because this was the separation of needles, so I was moving on to this needle. I got through to this cable, and I realized I had made a mistake. And I'll show you. <laughs> so I got 
find a mistake. So if you see both this one and this one lean the same way instead of leaning like that one. So as soon as I got to that cable, I realized I had did it wrong. But still, I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool hat. It's going to be a gift because I can't wear it. So, and I'll show you the top. pretty nice so sorry I don't have a little head to put it on and so that was the chains of gold and that was done in Lion Brands um, Homeland Glacier Bay number 105 all right let me show you this one real fast this FO I think this is the last um, washcloth in the collection to be made so just a simple, as I almost said, knit, simple crochet. So three rows of double crochet, run row, run row of single crochet. And I just end in double crochet. So very simple. I want, I just try different things. So this will probably go to someone who's less into frills and thrills. So I tried to make a ones that were different types. Okay, now that we've climbed on my back. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright. And then this, which again, I forgot the label for. <laughs> I am so sorry. This is a cowl I made. Um, I will get up and show that to you. Okay, she's just in my hair. That's fine. Alright, so I started off large. Don't ask me how many stitches. Probably somewhere around 120. Don't know where I ended up at. I started off large, and then I did... Is this inside out? Might be... Just might be inside out. There you go. Um, only way I can tell is by this. Alright, so I started off with 120... I think I did a foundation change that's super stretchy. Or foundation, not foundation change. <laughs> foundation double crochet. And so then I did, you know, back post and front post double crochet. And then I came up to here. And I did a, if it's a, is it a double, tr double treble linked crochet? Then like three. Then I put this yarn in. So I did it till I ran out. Put this yarn in, and that is I did like three. No, one round of single crochet. No, two rounds of single crochet. Reading my crochet. Three rounds of double crochet and then I did uh, the neck portion with this. I cannot put it on for you because someone is on my neck. But hold up. Essentially, and I will insert a picture, but that's essentially how it sits. That means really cool. So um, so at the Black Pearl, the owner, uh, her mom owns sheep and cuts the fleece and spins it. And this is, I think this is, it's three ply, one ply Lucy, which is a lighter sheep, and two ply Stanley, which is a darker sheep. So it's Lucy Stanley Stanley. <laughs> so I bought some of that. So it's about an Aran weight to a worsted weight. 
And then this on top is um, in the DPUC uh, Beach Cumber colorway. So it worked. It just, I love it. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Um, I just worked it up, bought the yarn, worked it up. As soon as I saw this, I just, I had an idea. So it's beautiful. It's all rustic and squishy and feels good. So I really love it. So that was an impromptu, um, I guess someone's camera shy, so. But that was an impromptu crochet. Alright. So since I just mentioned someone being camera shy, um, this is the hammock I made her. So this is, um, what's it called? Corner to corner crochet. And you can see I stopped here. I didn't grow it anymore here. And then I eventually stopped here. And I wanted kind of a straight edge for her to hang on. And I will insert pictures for you of her um, laying in her hammock. We gotta like get some stuff for her cage, but that's later on. All right, so next thing I made, I finished. If you remember, are the fingerless mitts. Woo woo! Let's turn that right side up. No. So they're a little. I don't know. I've been wearing them, so. <laughs> I finished them not long. I think not long after the podcast, so. They're pretty, they're pretty worn in. And these were knit in this yarn, which is spun right round, 80-20 sock, superwash merino, and the succulent colorway. She's a local yarn dyer, and she's awesome. <laughs> Standing up. And this is the free pattern off of Ravelry. It's the uh, Leafy Fingerless Mitts by Laura Pebbler. And they go with these. So uh, when it gets too cold, I put these on over them. So um, in the pattern for the leafy green mitts, you could have knitted it longer, but in order to fit with these, I kept it at this length and I didn't think I needed it longer. It looked fine, so it's they're really nice. And I recommend if you do do this pattern, do the little finger holes. <laughs> A lot of people are like, "Oh, I've never knit those." I'm like, "Oh, or crochet, yeah, knit those." I was like, "Oh, I don't know. I, I loved it. I loved. I love making those little finger holes. Those are great." But um, these have gotten a lot of wear. Where are we at? Oh, we are crawling in my hair. <laughs> we are really in there. Okay. Well then. So yeah. So those are my finished objects. Baby. Oh, poor baby. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what is next? All right. 
let me talk about socks for my son. I've not really, I've casted like a couple stitches on and that is it. So he really wanted those, so those have to get done, I guess. Maybe. And let me show you my sock I'm working on. This one I have not been prolifically knitting on because I just, it's just used for when I'm hanging out somewhere waiting. And it absolutely has to be mindless. Like, I will bring things to places that most people bring mindless knitting or crocheting to that I'll bring something heavy with cables or something. So, yeah, hold it that way. They're knit cuff down. So I want to learn to do the Kitchener stitch. I don't know if it's focusing or not. But, um, so, I got about three inches done. <laughs> so I will move that stitch marker now. Just check and see if I dropped yet another stitch. I didn't. Alright. Right. And I don't know if you remember. But this is the yarn. Yarn. By Premier Yarns. Or Serenity Sockweight Premier Yarns. It's 50% Superwash Merino, 25% Rayon from Bamboo, 25% Nylon. <laughs> so that's that. Oh, she trusts me. Alright. So that's that. Come on, baby. You gotta go here. And this is in my Great Value Project Bag. <laughs> yeah, I spent all my money on yarns. Oops, I didn't mean to have that in the frame. I try to buy yarn instead of accessories sometimes. So, you gotta kind of like choose, you know, what do I really need? You know, what do I want? So, that's that. Alright, so we did socks and socks. <sighs> Let me show you something I was working on. So, I, you know, we all stop in at AC Moore and or Michaels or Joann's. I will insert a better picture, but here's the pattern. There you go. And I think that's it. And once I finish this, I will put notes in on Ravelry. It is on Ravelry, but here's the thing. <laughs> it's really badly, it's not well written. When it prints out, it prints out the top jumbled mess at the bottom, as you can see. And it says, step one, hot jumble mess. Step two, cast on some stitches. Well, what? And then abbreviations are all just a hot mess together. Whatever. And then, so I had to, to reprint out the pattern, or rewrite it. And then I have to, you have to download this. You, that's recommended. But again, I'll put that in the notes, and I'll put all the links in the information. So, turns out, it says cast on 86 stitches. You need to cast on 92 for the larger one. I'm not sure for the small one. So it goes extra small, medium, extra small, small, medium, large. I will work that out shortly for you when I'm done. Because 
I'm still taking all the notes. So the cast on is wrong. Some of the information written here is wrong. And it doesn't say you need stitch markers, stitch or place markers, but you do. You do need place markers. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I'm still working out some of the kinks because some of this written here is different from their graph. So I'm still working out the kinks in that. Um, but I haven't gotten much done yet because it is quite frustrating. <laughs> so. Oh, what you doing? But I did the recommended yarn because I thought it was pretty. And here's the brand. It's Stitch Studio. So it's the AC Moore brand, pretty sure. And the Earth Tones. And this Earth Tone color is Purple Heart. And it's 95% acrylic, 5% viscose, uh, 612 yards, 560 meters, uh, 280 grams, 9.8 ounces recommended to use a 5 um, millimeter knitting needle and crochet hook. And it's for worsted weight. So, oh, thought she was going to fall. So here's the yarn. It's a huge jumbled mass. It's pretty though. This is all I got done. Having to rip out 500 freaking times and working out the pattern. I'm doing it on a uh, six millimeter uh, needles with a 29 inch hook. I think that's all you really need. <laughs> Oh god. Anyway, so um, I will have I will have information, you know, explaining stuff. So, but yeah, that pattern's a little rough. A little rough for wear. It's like really. I thought I was expecting more from from them. Alright, and then for the piece of data resistance, the other whip that I'm actively working on, and I'll go over why I'm, about the other whips and why I'm not working on them. This pattern does have some some minor discrepancies, which again I will I've been taking notes as you can see, like and obviously I'm doing I ch changed some things. And I wrote it down. I'm trying to find a good picture for you. So I've, I've been writing down notes, so I'll put this in Ravelry. Come on, focus. But you can kind of see it. You don't really need to focus. Um, Entwine Sheet Cable Sweater. Um, it's on Red Heart and on Ravelry. And they want you... So Marley Bird, I don't know if you know her, she writes crochet and knitting patterns. And... No, you can't go any further in there. Um, she has a new sheep... No, chic sheep... Uh, yarn line. So it's wool from wherever, some other country... Process in China. That's all I know. <laughs> so it's a seven page pattern. Not that hard though. Um, I'll give you a better picture. So the back is longer than the front. Here's the cable pattern. And I've been taking lots of notes. What I've been doing is, instead of doing it all one color, I'm doing it in a multitude of colors. So I'm fading it. Instead of doing my actual fade. One of 500 projects. So here is the back. I don't know what 
you can see. This is the front of the back. I weaved in all my ends, but I did not cut them off, as you can see. So the back is pretty plain. And how I'm doing the back is exactly how I'm doing the front. And I'm going to put all those notes in on the Ravelry as soon as I'm done. And... So there's the front. The cable is freaking gorgeous. And that's why. Oh, we're crawling up my arm, you guys. <laughs> and this is why I'm I did it in that color because it stands out more and it looks more like stone and all this faded color will look like grass houses and then there's like this huge stone cable. Um, apparently we're up here on my arm. So the first colorway of the fade. Okay. There you go. The next color. So I, I'm on this one. So it's attached. These are all DK. <laughs> all right, let me show you the gray real fast. That's just, um, I think it's pretty obvious. That's just in the Patton's, um, Patton's Wool DK Superwash, and it comes in 50 gram, 50 gram uh, ball, so not much. I have to buy those. All right, so I showed you. So this is the first color. This is the second color. All right, third color. This hasn't, I'm obviously not on it, on this yet. So it has not been divided out. And this is the one I couldn't pronounce. Ugh. It's, I know you were trouble. Was it I knew? I knew you were trouble. And then fourth color. And this is Woolen Boon, and it's hands down. You draw super wash merino DKs. And then, last but not least. And this is Savvy Scenes Tortuga. Like, how can you not love something called Tortuga? Pirates of the Caribbean! Sorry, I'm silly. <laughs> Alrighty. So yeah, it's gonna... The front is gonna fade like that. But, it'll look like this. And the one thing I did was, I had trouble with the, the bottom part and wanted five rows of slip stitches. You know, just slip stitching together. I was like, no. I tried it. I guess this yarn, and you can feel there's a huge difference between the patterns and then 
these, even though these are all 100% superwash merino, um, I don't know, this one is like sticky. And I had so much trouble. Here was the original band. I frogged it 500 times, finally by the billionth time, it stuck and broke the yarn, so that's just a reminder of how awful that beginning was. So instead, I did the chain. I'll put notes in. I think it was a 97 chain, 795, something like that. Did a chain, double crochet, and then I did a front post and back post double crochet. And I think it looks nice with the, um, oh, where are we going? Okay. And I think it looks nice with this, with the um, cable. Cable pattern is really, 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 really easy. So, that's about it. <laughs> I'm glad she's having fun Ow. on me. Um... So the other projects, like my flax light sweater, are in hibernation right now because, I don't know, I just lost my mojo. So I had to like, whip up some other projects. Excuse me. I lost my mojo, so. Just making sure. Um, so I had to do some other things, so. And then I got a little bit more mojo and did this. So. <laughs> and did some, obviously whipped up some other things. And so, I don't know why, but I just did. Oh, did I show you my gauge swatch? Oh, and I also, even though I did a gauge swatch, um, I ended up going just going with the hook sizes she said to use because I didn't understand. Um, it says gauge 14 extended single crochets equals 4 inches 10 centimeters. Got it. 12 rows equals 4 inches 10 centimeters for the body. Got it. 18 stitches equals 4 inches 10 centimeters semicolon 24 rows equals 4 inches 10 centimeters for the ribbed cuff. Okay, 15 stitches 15 stitches equals 4 inches 10 centimeters semicolon 14 rows equals 4 and one quarter inch, 11 centimeters. Before what? <laughs> Why'd we stop? So, I don't know. It just kind of stopped. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Apparently, that's that. Now we're a little less camera shy, apparently. Okay, so yeah, I sweaters in hibernation because I, I lost my mojo. Just all I told you, I tore it, so <laughs> I just got frustrated. Uh, the blankets. Um, I just didn't start. Like, I lost my mojo on one thing, and then I started these other projects that kind of led into November, so I was like, ah, oh, crap. And the other socks, again, I kind of lost my mojo. <laughs> knowing that, because these socks are for others, knowing that, I'm like, are they going to appreciate it? Do they appreciate, you know, knowing that there's not many people out there who are truly knit worthy. Or crochet worthy so excuse me I'm supposed to speak up <clears throat> so
So I lost my mojo because people, you're just, just knowing that these people aren't necessarily crochet or knit worthy. So it's easy to lose it. So a mess. It's, I thought it'd be fun to podcast with her, but maybe it wasn't a good idea. But whatever, I did it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna put this kind of all under fashion hands. But I didn't get much. Um, this is Red Heart Super Saver Stripes and the parrot. Oh sh no! Now I know what's going on. My other beard dragon is pissed and is head bobbing her right now. <laughs> he is upset. Ooh, his beard is out. He's just a baby too. He is not happy with this situation at hand. I didn't even think about him doing this mess. Oops. Cause he, I'm explaining where this one is, but ooh, Lord. I don't piss off. Oh Lord. <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? So this is in the parrot stripe. I'm moving this all around. And it's a hundred percent acrylic, as y'all may know. I don't know where I was going. Oh, there we go. Uh, five ounces, 141 grams, 236 yards, 215 meters. It obviously recommends a five millimeter crochet or knitting needle because it is medium worsted weight. And then this is same thing, Red Heart Super Saver. Seven ounces, 198 grams, 364 yards, 333 meters. Um, same recommendations of the needle. What are we doing? And this is Jade. So these two were meant to go together. And I'll show you why. What was I saying for my son? These are the... It's Pat and Troy's FX. I don't know. It's dark. These are 7525 Superwash Nylon Blend. You know, they're 50 grams. And this is... Cascade Colors. <laughs> oh my god, these silly colorways. And then I got two of those and then for the, here's the, for the heels and toes. So I'm doing this toe up. That's, I cast it on and they're in here. And it's just this Serenity Sock Yarn again by Premier Yarns. Oh, it's in navy. That doesn't look navy to me. thought that was a hair in my face. And then a little something, something for myself. Patterns again. This is a black tweed. It's kind of a funky tweed. Uh, okay, so the tweed, so it's 90% wool and the tweed is 7% acrylic and 3% viscose. Oh, these are 100 gram balls. I thought these were 50. These are not 50, that's right. So these are 100 gram balls. And then, for patterns I bought, I think this one was $5, and this is why I bought the Red Heart Super Saver. And this is for the dragon. I will put in um, pictures of it in color. So, this pattern is a 25-page crochet pattern. Doesn't she email me with a 30-something page revision with more explanations? I'm like, oh, God. So, I have to go through and see which ones I have to print out. And then I bought the fish lips, fish lips kiss heel. Um, I shouldn't put that up there like that, right? <laughs> I don't know what's written in the last. 
I don't think the pattern's on there, but let me just cover it up. So I got the Fish Lips Kiss Heel by the Socks Therapist. Socks Therapist is now my friend on Ravelry. Yay! That's kind of cool, actually. And so that's it for my acquisitions or stash enhancements. Um, <clears throat> so gonna get crochet happy in a minute and all right so I did stash so let's go on to what's next what's next trying to finish all this crap I start <laughs> not crap I start a lot yes it's true I know it girl you know it's true ooh 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 I love you anyways uh yeah so yeah what are you gonna do so obviously, what's next is obviously the dragon, and then I was supposed to do, if I can show the right, I don't know, I printed this thing out like 500 times. There's no like PDF or anything for it. I'll put some pictures in, but it's some fingerless mitts. One of my groups wanted to join. I just finished my other fingerless mitts. You're going sideways. A little hard for me to balance. And so I was like, I'll see if I can cast these on. I have not, so that's a thing. Um, I just couldn't get the pattern to print out correctly. It's like I'm missing pieces of it, and I hate going off my phone. I like to take notes. Otherwise, I won't, and then I won't tell you what's up on Ravelry. So <laughs> I won't weigh the yarn. I won't do nothing. So I need to be able to take notes. Um, and then what to do? Obviously, more sweaters and... They think the reason why I have some of these languishing, like, uh, other things, because I want to do more selfish uh, making, because I hardly ever end up with anything for myself, and so now I just need to make, make, and make. And then, oh, and then I need to make myself a hat, specifically a crochet cable hat, but we'll see how that goes. Oh my god, girl, you crazy. Alright, so, on to learning. What am I learning? Well, I'll be learning more brioche techniques, double knitting, and designing. So, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, am I going to be, do I plan on being a prolific designer? No. The idea is just so I can make more stuff meant for me. Um, you know, having dreads, I can't just make a hat, like, you know, like that hat pattern, like, and then just put it, you know, I have to be able to take, I have to, you know, have, I, the, the, even the, um, what's this part called, the ribbing, the headband part, obviously has to be slightly bigger for me, I have a big head. But, like, much of this has to be increased and decreased, and so designing, I like to do more of, just to, just to be able to make stuff for me and, you know, close friends and family. Alright, and then crafting bits and pieces. Again, I'll put some more links down below. But I'm making ornaments for everyone. And I found, I am put the stickers on the outside, and I have some spray. I'm like, oh my god, it's cracked. It's a cat here. My cat's been trying to get to these. So I'll put glitter on the inside. I'm going to put a picture, and then I'm going to put a little, a little string, and they're going to hang. And I'm going to spray these with something, but I'm not sure yet. Um, we'll see. We'll see what I do. And then I figured out how to make these. You fold your paper a certain way, then you you cut, and you do all these. It's really cool, so. Um, I need to get thinner paper, though. But, yeah, this is pretty cool. So I plan doing more of these, just for the fun of it. More stuff like that. Maybe some more origami things, so that'd be fun. And making some boxes for the ornaments. That'd be cool. <clears throat> Alright, 
you guys. Before we get to the elephant in the room, <laughs> uh, about my animals, I'm going to talk about the cats first and the dogs. So, we were feeding, we don't free feed. We were feeding, we have cups and portion out their food. But my one cat was still gaining weight. And turns out we were feeding and walking away and she was eating others' food. So I decided to feed the dogs and cats together. So I thought if I fed them separately, you know, the dog, neither animal would bug each other. But it produced a different problem. So I just went back to feeding them together. And the dogs know to sit and stay. They're not allowed to get up until they are given the release command, which is release. So they can sit and stay, and then the cats can eat. And I police the cats. I sit there. They eat their portion. They do not go and eat someone else's portion. It's mainly one cat star that was doing that. So everyone eats their portion, and then they usually I take their bowls, put their bowls away, and they get up and go. And then, you know, to keep Star from eating a dog's food. What are we doing, sweetheart? Um, she can probably get down from here now. But I don't know. I'll get her in a minute. Or now. I got you, baby girl. So to keep them from um, eating other foods, my hair probably looks a mess. I can't see. I got the tripod in the middle. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm policing them and I'm using commands. So even the cats were following commands. So that worked out well. So I think that's a better alternative. And even, you know, the cats are, well, at least the one cat is a now much better weight. So... And then the other cat has more weight. I think they're all now about close to the same weight. So everyone has, you know, equal amount of food, water, and all that. And I just make sure the cats, because they will try and eat the dog's food as well. And vice versa, right? So I just, you know, the cats must leave. And like, you know, now you leave. You leave it. There you go. They leave the dog's food. So then I feed... You know, the one dog first, she starts eating. When she's halfway through, I release the next dog. He starts eating. Now they're not next to each other. I, it's kind of like a triangle, so I'm in the middle. Once, And I release the other dog. So then they finish eating. I pick up everyone's bowls and put their bowls away. So the bowls are gone. So there's no... I don't really have a problem with food aggression, but I don't... I don't want to find out that I do. Or food uh, guarding or resource guarding. You know, it's a touchy subject for a lot of people, so, you know, whatever. But, you know, so, and it's worked out really well. So, everyone's happy, everyone gets their food portion, and we live happily ever after. And then next, we went to the Reptile Expo. Uh, November 4th and well this is what we got La Fonda a bearded dragon um, she is in my son's room my other bearded dragon has his full beard out he is pissed this is a two-year-old female I don't know much about their morph so she looks like she has hypo because she has some hypo nails oh but, um, yeah, oh, you can see her, her color. Let me get up and show her to you.
and we named her LaFonda. So this is a little girl that's been climbing all over my head during the whole podcast. And so we went to the Reptile Expo. I'll insert some pictures at the end. And we got basically like we got some more roaches, some more crickets, mealworms, hornworms for these guys. I got a bunch of, um, excuse me, excuse me, uh, baby, baby rats, or not baby rats, but small rats for the snake. And yeah, I just gotta get some more stuff for her cage. But um, I got her cage pretty fairly inexpensively. So, you know, typically your enclosures are your most expensive, right? Is that how it works? Well, usually at your big box stores. And then, obviously, if you get specialty bred animals, they're more expensive, but regardless. I actually, no matter how you looked at it, I got the cage really inexpensively. So, um, I went ahead and got her. And it was a lot of fun. Um, I think all my friends got snakes right and I got snakes I got a snake at the last one I'm definitely going to the next expo so I can't wait for that I already took off of work so that's exciting <laughs> but yeah um it's been quite a long podcast <laughs> a little bit longer than I wanted it to be but hopefully with editing it won't be as long <laughs> and you know La Fonda was a joy to have and other bearded dragon is pissed, even head bobbed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my son even cleaned up her room to get her in there, so that was pretty cool. Vacuumed and everything. Wow. But yeah, so yeah. Um, it's been great. I just want to wish everyone a. I hope you had a safe and happy Halloween. Uh, first and foremost, I just worked. I didn't do anything. My son didn't even do anything. Um, I think I gave him a curfew or something to be home by because he had school the next day. And I call at some point. Excuse me, I apologize. I called or texted or something. He was at home, so I was like, oh, that's weird. But okay, whatever. And then, so yeah, we didn't do anything for Halloween. Um, we didn't really do much anything for my birthday we went out to dinner the other night so that was a lot of fun and don't know what's going on for thanksgiving so we'll see then but um rock city roller derby is having an all-inclusive scrimmage um the saturday after thanksgiving i will post that down below uh so you can have that information sorry i rubbed my eye and I think that's it, right? You're like, what do you mean, right? How am I supposed to know? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So I want everyone to be safe, stay safe, be vigilant out there. Um, it's crazy. Every time I turn on the news, there's all these crazy shootings everywhere. So uh, be safe. You know, kiss your loved ones, let everyone know you love them. And I will catch you on the flip side. This is Living Drag Girl with Locks, Knots, and Stitches. And this is LaFonda. Bye!